Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Boris Rensky. Hello, everyone, and thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set this one down right here to keep you a little bit in suspense. Enjoy looking at it. As you guys have heard, at Mirantis, we are nowadays all very excited about managed open cloud. But we're not just excited. We're also a little bit worried. And the reason we're worried is because before, pretty much everything that we were doing, we referred to as private cloud. And as I've been experiencing lately, private cloud has become a bit of a toxic word in the enterprise. It's a kind of word that if you are in some sort of CIO networking event, and you come up to the CIO, and you start talking, and they're very engaged, and then you mutter the words private cloud, they tend to kind of look away very quickly and look for a more engaging conversation partner. And the reason why this happened is because I think private cloud evolved to become a bit of a marketing term that, unfortunately, from time to time is associated with failure. And the reason it's associated with failure is because really the whole private cloud concept piggybacks on cloud, which has really been evangelized by public cloud. And when public cloud kind of started taking off, it really was based on a very particular prescriptive delivery model. In my view, private cloud has unfortunately violated some of the key principles that were instrumental to the success of public cloud. So at Marantis, we want managed open cloud, or some people refer to it private cloud as a service, which we don't want to use the word private there. Um, for something that is identified with success. And for that to happen, it's important that we don't really repeat the same private cloud mistakes with managed open cloud. I'd like to spend the next 10 minutes going over some of those mistakes. So we'll start with just a very basic thing of how the clouds are built. How do we typically build a private cloud in the enterprise? The first concept that comes to mind to anybody building a private cloud and enterprise, at least in our experience, is really about self-service and self-service APIs. The idea is we have our enterprise stuff. Let's bring some self-service APIs on top of that. And voila, we got ourselves a private cloud. So OpenStack is a very common fabric for that. OpenStack, it is. We'll start with OpenStack. Now, next step is uh, we need to actually build the underlying components, right? Because OpenStack by itself doesn't really do anything. It's just effectively an API server. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and pick our enterprise Linux, or not to single anybody out with Linux, enterprise hypervisor, let's call it, which in case of Linux is the same thing usually. Then we'll have to find our enterprise network, and then we'll have to do our enterprise storage, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to use a little bit of uh, black and white terms to illustrate the point. So I do realize that the world actually is a bit gray, so don't take everything completely literally. So if I'm an enterprise hypervisor vendor or an enterprise Linux vendor, part of being enterprise is really about making sure that my enterprise stuff interoperates well with all of the other enterprise elements of the stack. So I make sure that I certify my stuff on uh, any kind of hardware, all kinds of enterprise storage, all kinds of enterprise SDNs, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, all of that work of interoperability testing and then packaging all of this interoperability with you know, elegant product marketing collateral costs money. And the same goes for enterprise network, and the same goes for enterprise storage, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if I'm 
an enterprise systems administrator or an enterprise Linux administrator. This is great because what that means is that I can learn one SDN, for instance, from the top number one vendor that is interoperable with all the other enterprise stuff. I get certifications to put on my resume. And, uh, and my skill set is applicable across all different enterprise silos and even outside of the place that I work in. So I naturally will push this horizontal design pattern across all of the elements of the stack to build this private cloud. Now, let's switch to this different guy that sits right there up on top. This guy is a guy trying to build a cloud inside the enterprise. You can also think of this guy as uh, the workload or the user of a cloud. So this guy is on the hook to deliver business results, business outcomes. And this guy doesn't really care about whether or not the SDN or the storage will interoperate with all different kinds of things. The most important thing for this guy is that the storage, the SDN, and all of the other elements that go into the stack, they work really well together. That's the only thing that matters. But if I am this guy inside a traditional enterprise, unfortunately, I can't just say, hey, I'm just going to build my own stuff out of open source that I will find somewhere. I have to deal with the unfortunate enterprise pattern that has been primarily dominated by the notion of selling enterprise software license or enterprise software subscription. So when I build the cloud, my cloud ends up not having optimal ROI. But forget ROI for a second. After all, cloud's about agility and making the company get to market faster, et cetera. The other problem I have to deal with is that if I'm building it out of enterprise components, chances are the hypervisor vendor that I'm working with maybe is trying to bring to market a storage solution also. And the enterprise networking vendor I'm working with is also trying to get into the hypervisor business. And the integrations that end up happening within the different elements of the stack actually don't work very well. And my cloud doesn't work very well as a byproduct. So not only don't you get an optimal ROI, you also don't get a very stable cloud fabric. Now, the public cloud guys, of course, they figured this out. So, and AWS is known to be the most successful open source company, or at least it's touted to be that, because they leverage a lot of open source components. They have a vertically integrated view of the stack. They make sure that all the components work well together. And voila, everybody's happy. So the first takeaway about managed open cloud that I'd like to kind of talk about or that I've talked about is that I think that managed open cloud, as we try to make it successful, has to be built following a vertical design pattern, at least as much as possible. That's a very important notion. Rather than just be opportunistically stitched out of different enterprise software components just because this enterprise is standardized on this stuff. Next, I'd like to talk about how you operate the thing, right? Because one of the biggest advantages of public cloud is uh, this notion of continuously delivered infrastructure fabric. You get all of these cool features literally on like biweekly or monthly release cycles that happen two and three weeks apart, and you're continuously getting new cool stuff to play with, don't have to deal with this rip and replace upgrade notion. And I'm not going to talk about the importance of properly instrumenting you know, the CI, CD delivery pipeline and using the infrastructure as code pattern. That's, that's clear. But I'm going to talk about the importance of open in the cloud. So managed open cloud, open is not just some marketing FUD, in my view, that is trying to piggyback on the scary notion of vendor lock-in. If you want to get to this continuous delivery pattern, you have to make sure that uh, you are able to lifecycle all of the elements of the stack together. So to dive into this just a little bit deeper, let's look at you know, what things would look like if I'm trying to stitch this together out of the enterprise stack. So let's say, and this is like real problems that we've been dealing literally at Mirantis regularly. 
let's say a new version of OpenStack comes out has some important bug fixes and features that we'd like to push to our users. And the user X is using OpenStack with some sort of enterprise network or enterprise storage. Well, the enterprise networking vendor is going to take three months to write the driver for this new release of OpenStack, and then another month to build it and test it and then release a certified version. So if I'm using that, I can't, I can't push the new OpenStack code. Now, if I'm also having things like some enterprise hypervisor or enterprise storage in the picture, then they will release on a different cycle that's most likely a waterfall cycle that will take me out another 6 or 12 or sometimes even 18 months. So when you build your cloud following this horizontal pattern, you're forced into waterfall release approach. And you completely obliterate the uh, value out of a uh, um, public cloud continuous delivery disruption. So the second takeaway is as we try to make managed open cloud something that stands for success, it's important that we make sure that it's continuously delivered on a synchronized cycle with all of the underlying components. Now, finally, I want to talk about the managed piece. Right? So why is managed important? So today, and this is just not an infrastructure industry, but everywhere, there's this notion of customer centricity. It's very important to have a company that is super customer centric. Know your customer, blah, blah, blah. Amazon calls it customer obsessed. But I think that when it comes to the consumer world, it's kind of a very easy notion. You know, you buy a t-shirt, you get very good service, it comes quickly, yay, good customer service. When it comes to the enterprise, this notion becomes very hard because being customer obsessed in the enterprise world does not only mean that you have to be customer obsessed. You have to be customer obsessed about the right customer problem. And enterprises are complicated beasts. And not all people or groups within the enterprise understand even what is the right problem to take the enterprise forward. And uh, in the cloud world today, as enterprises are transitioning from this pattern of buying software to the pattern of going to as a service, there's this mess. And there's a lot of champions that are on the wrong side, not because they're bad people, but simply because maybe for political or process people, for, for political or process reasons, they're um, not clear what the right problem is for their organization. There are some right guys also. So it's extremely important that you pick the right problem that you're solving for the customer. And when you're delivering the infrastructure as a service, it kind of becomes a force function to align what you do as a vendor with actually solving the problem for the right customer. So I think it's important for everybody to understand that public cloud is not just a technology disruption. Public cloud is successful because it's a go-to-market disruption as well. It's a disruption whereby you're solving the right problem for the customer as opposed to the wrong one. So managed open cloud, in our view, must be delivered as a service to force the focus on solving the right customer problem. Finally, when we said that we're a managed open cloud company now at Marantis, a lot of people came to us and said, well, you guys just service company, right? So basically, you do like managed services, right? You take all of the standard enterprise stuff and you manage this mess for less. And no. So it's very important to understand that this is not the case. If we are to perpetuate the notion of manage enterprise mess for less via the managed open cloud concept, this is a 100% diff and the path to Dr. Locke. What I'd like to ask of everybody is that as we try to succeed with managed open cloud or Gen 2 cloud, as we call it, or cloud as a service, as some people refer to it, we perpetuate the right concepts. And if we want the future of the data center to be defined by the open innovation, I think it's important that we gather together and we become very prescriptive about how we actually deliver the cloud experience. To close, I wanted to make a very exciting announcement. So everything that I was talking about, you know, you guys can say it's Boris' it's crazy talk, Marantz is saying some weird stuff. But for us, it's important that it's not just us that embraces this notion and this approach, that the broader ecosystem embraces it. There is no way that we'll succeed otherwise. And what I'd like to uh, do today 
is uh, announce our global partnership with Fujitsu around managed open cloud. I would like to call Mr. Tanaka on stage. So Mr. Tanaka runs the uh, platform software division at Fujitsu. So <laughs> welcome. Boris, and thank you for the introduction. At Fujitsu, we are very, very excited to partner with Mirantis and help bring the managed open cloud model to enterprises around the world. Mirantis' delivery approach combined with Fujitsu's experience will allow our customers to adopt managed open cloud with confidence. Thank you. Thank you. So now, for this thing, we are bringing, creating a new tradition. This is the black box that you have seen in the video. And uh, what we're going to do is the token of uh, a big vendor joining the managed open cloud movement. We're going to have Mr. Tanaka attempt to destroy this black box <laughs> with a foot. I don't know if we're going to be successful. It's really well done. But hey, I'll, Marantz has got your back if you fail. Come on. Do it again. <laughs> You will need Mirantis in this partnership. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs>